that is yeah. Verdi. That I mean, oh, there's nothing better than that. I'm a big Wagner fan, but there's nothing better than that. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to hear this voice wrap itself around that. Oh, my God. All right. Welcome All right. to... This is the first Classical, Classical Rebellion, Rebellion Opera Edition. Oh. As much as we've talked about symphonic and orchestral pieces of music, we have we're really, really com- opera guys. Well, we are. We are. That's what we... like. And so as much as we love... The concert hall, our home is the opera. <laughs> it really is. But he, I got two pieces of advice. Somebody said, you have a good voice. You'd, you know, you should figure out what you're doing. Go see this teacher. Another guy said, they need bases in the opera course for Turandot. Go audition. I'm like, uh-huh. I went to an opera when I was five. Okay, I remember basically what it's like. I, so I went and I got into Turandot in the chorus. And all of a sudden, I'm on stage with people like Christina Doitakam and Paul Plischke and watching these wonderful major artists work and rehearse. And for the next 10 years, it was like an ongoing workshop while I'm learning to sing. Mm. I mean, I, I, I could sort of fake it. But then that's why my friend said, you need to figure out what you're doing before you hurt yourself. Because you have a pretty good voice. So I went and studied while I'm getting professional experience. But the minute we got on stage in the uh, in the orchestra tech of Turandot, mm-hmm. and I felt I felt like the orchestra was the stage. I felt like I was yeah. standing on sound. I love this. This is a team sport that I want to get a letter in. Yeah. And, I, and so I sort of made it, that my goal. It really is the highest art form. It's a synthesis. It takes more more contributions from more different disciplines yeah. to make opera happen than in any other art form. And I yeah. just love that so much. Yeah. And when opera is done well, when it all lines up, the singers, the production, the conductor, the director, the chorus, the company itself, the audience, when it all lines up... There's nothing else like it. There's nothing else there like it. There is nothing no one else like it. in that audience will... Hate it. Like there's no way to you will love you'll find, you'll be overwhelmed by opera when it's done. The problem is it's so difficult to do it. It's difficult to get perfectly it to, to get it to that spot. I mean, Orchestras can get there a lot easier. I don't want to say easier, but more frequently, more directly because yeah. they have less to contend with. Right. But you've got to have the entire cast has got to be because you if there's one one principal singer who's having a bad night or just having a bad end of their career or whatever's going on it it it, it can it, it, it's almost like oh jeez he's singing again I, 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 I once I once described <laughs> operas uh, there, there's an analogy to be made between an operatic production and a dirigible airship they're both large unwieldy crea- yeah. <laughs> you know creations that don't turn on a dime and 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 are difficult to maneuver uh, and when they crash lives generally aren't lost right, but, but it's, it's but it's messy it's a conflagration <laughs> it's like, ah. yeah. um, but when it does fly it's such a beautiful serene looking thing and uh, and and the Majestic. audience just it, there's yeah. a majesty about operatic yeah. triumph yeah. That really is, is there's nothing else like so it. So the, the opera we're talking about tonight is Aida. The A opera. The A, A the... B, C of opera. You know, going backwards, it's Carmen, Bohem, and, and Aida. Aida. Yes. And it's so I. Or as ex- Groucho Marx said, a cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you from the opera Aida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dad jokes. I know. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about. So this is. Not a fully staged costume production. And some people are, uh, I can imagine, disappointed. Some audience members. I, as a performer, am excited. And let me tell you why. <laughs> you tell me why. Because I, mean, I know why, but. Every production we have a Zitzprobe where everyone shows up with their scores. Zitzprobe in German means sitting rehearsal. Right. A, a proba or prova in Italian means to prove, it's, a, it's to rehearse. And yeah. So sitting rehearsal, where everybody's, sitting. the orchestra's yeah. there, the soloists are there, the chorus is there, we're all, and we have our right. scores, and it's a music rehearsal. It is. And so the, the chorus and principals have been rehearsing with piano, the orchestra's been rehearsing with orchestra, and this is the first time they all come together right. in a modern opera production. It's the schedule. And so we sit there with our scores, and we are all focused it's on the all conductor. about the voice, the voice and, the, and music. the music. And it is 
always, I hate to reveal this, always the best musical experience of the entire run, in my opinion. Well, maybe not from the principles, but for me personally, because I don't have wig tape that's keeping my mouth from opening. Right. You know, I don't have a costume that's dehydrating me. Or staging that makes you turn up stage to run away just when you're about to sing a high note. Right. You know? Yeah. And or cheat out. Cheat out. Like the, you know, the direction sometimes doesn't always support the music. You know, we have to be looking this way, but we'd be singing off stage if we weren't singing this way. Right. So, yeah. And so I am absolutely thrilled that this is... A, a, it's, a, a, it's about the voice and the music. It's a pure musical experience. Yes. For me, it has a parallel uh, with a, a particular... You know that I'm a Toscanini fan. And Toscanini, of course, was um, uh, knew Verdi very well. And... Um, like that. Like that. And conducted the premiere of Falstaff. Was not there to conduct the premiere of Aida, but, uh, but he did conduct Aida. And one of the earliest video uh, broadcast performances of classical music uh, from... I think 1951 is um, Arturo Toscanini and the NBC Orchestra mm -hmm. with Richard Tucker, Nan Merriman. It's a it's an it's an all star quartet mm -hmm. uh, singing Aida in Studio 8H, uh, and it's it just has the ring of verity and authenticity about it because yeah. you knew that this was a performance that linked to Verdi's. Yeah. If you want to know how Verdi goes, linked to the mind of Verdi. Yeah. You know because and it's tight. Mm. It's so tight. Yeah. It's like... Uh. And I would say, of the late Verdi operas, Aida is... It's just... It's There's no... You could fabricate a deeper psychological level about the priestly caste, and, and maybe that's a criticism of politics within Italy and the unification and blah, blah, blah. I don't see that at all in Aida. I just might see that in other places, but I don't see it in Aida. Well, if it is there, it's related to 19th but, century Italian politics, yeah, you and it doesn't really, really have to be there. No, we don't have yeah. to. It's like it's like Meisterzinger. You know, it's like Wagner was anti-Semitic and he was drawing the Nibelungs as Jews and blah blah blah. Well, maybe he was, but we don't have to take it that way. Right. You know. Yeah. We don't have to. It can you you can view it yeah. on another there's level. There's no with Aida. There's no need for overinterpretation because I don't think it really exists. It is a phenomenal masterpiece of vocal. And orchestral and choral music and that's more than enough it has a classicism a, a clearly drawn sorry about that a clearly drawn classical clarity about it that it because of it's semi-mythological you know it's ancient egyptian yeah, setting sure. and everything but it, it's so clear it has like a bellini-esque statuesque quality about it you hmm. know like it's it is so finely chiseled that the lines, it, it, it's just, it, it, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing second rate about any of it. All mm -hmm. the underbrush has been cleared away. Yeah. Here are the major motives and this is how they entwine. Yeah. And it's, it's just a, a magnum opus. Yeah. Yeah. And... Yeah. Without any... No Verdi Umchak. No, there's no... <laughs> well, very little. <laughs> I don't think there's... Wait, uh, you got an example? Well, I mean... Uh, Okay, that's, it's, yeah. Well, you know, the, the triumphal march and scene, which is a ballet uh, that mm -hmm. comes into the middle of the triumphal scene. But that's, again, that theme itself is quite simple, really. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and. But it don't stay and, simple. And cl no, but, but it's, <laughs> it's classical in its presentation. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like a Bellini heroic theme. And. It's it's yeah. just beautiful. It's so magnificent. Your Turandot experience I had in Aida the first time I was in oh, okay. it, in the orchestra dress I, rehearsal. I can well understand that yeah. you would have had that experience. Yeah. So I'm in the I'm in the backstage left, way back corner. Like the entire everything is over there, and I'm just a popolo that's barely made it on the stage. It's maybe my fourth or fifth opera, <laughs> and. <laughs> You know, this is the first time we're having the triumphal scene with the orchestra and the principals and everyone singing. And when it comes to um, uh, C. El Rey, um, Rodemes is explaining himself in the middle of the scene and then we right. reprise. <laughs> Thank you. 
so the the soprano and tenor on high A's sustaining this thing, and it's just this massive suspension, and the orchestra's building up, and there's I know it's coming. I'm just like I, I just fall apart, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was so overwhelming. Oh my god, like it it devastated me. I mean, for I, no reason. I didn't care about Rodimaze or Aida. It wasn't no, it's a, a it's story. a shattering experience. It was just the act the act two scene two. If you if you want to go to act two scene two, listen to um, the, the triumphal scene, and tell me that that is not uh, ju just as monumental as one of the Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. I mean, it is a a shattering heroic uh, yeah. undertaking, and it's just wonderful. It's yeah. not the most complicated music in the world. The way it's put together and built up is just pure magic. Yeah. yeah. And it'll it'll just grab you by your heartstrings and you'll be everything from a 19th century Italian patriot to a pharaoh of Egypt and a, you know a, yeah. yeah I mean you it'll you'll and have And let's not forget that the Triumph was a Roman. Yes, well fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was well it was you know this is that's the Italian influence. Yeah. It, it was it was Aida was written for the opening of the of the this, Suez Canal yeah. and it was premiered at the Opera House in in uh, in, Cairo, in Cairo yeah. and it was an immediate smash hit. I mean, really? Yeah. It's like the, it becomes like the number one opera. Yeah. Everybody wants to wants to do Aida, yeah. and you know it, it's got it, the tri when when the triumph comes through and they the, they bring in the Ethiopian slaves and all the animals that they've brought with. And this is the traditional one where you have an elephant on stage if they mm. do it at Verona at the twenty thousand right. seat amphitheater. Yeah. You know, and all everything that Rodimus has has conquered and brought back to 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 uh, to Egypt. Including Aida, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is a, it, it's one of the great parade sequences. But right. even if the parade's not there, the oh, music yeah. is, yeah. and you won't really miss it. Yeah. I guarantee you'll be able to see it. Oh, for sure, you'll be able to see <laughs> yeah. it. Let's talk a little bit about the singers in this. Sure. Uh, Michelle Bradley is our Aida, mm -hmm. and she is a burgeoning young soprano mm -hmm. of dramatic. It, I, but it's, it's difficult to tell. We'll know when she gets there if she's got the dramatic voice. But we have her for now. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you just a little bit of story. One time I did a performance uh, early in my career of Unbalo and Mascara at Riverside, Riverside Opera. And I, 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 had, I was the marinaro in, in that okay. tiny little coffin of spit part. The soprano was Deborah Voigt. Really? Just before right. she got really big. Uh -huh. And yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and she, she signed that uh, contract with Telarc and just went through the, her career went through the yeah. roof. So you never know who you're going to hear. Right. Uh, you know, but I yeah. guarantee if you're on stage singing Aida, you must have something going for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. A little bit of what she's done, though. Um, but if you look for videos of her, there are not a lot of them out there with orchestra, which because she's a, a, a rising mm -hmm. dramatic soprano, or, or spinto soprano is probably more accurate. But mm -hmm. she was uh, Leonora in Forza del Destino in Frankfurt most recently. Okay. So that's not nothing. That's not a sneeze. No. No. And our Amenaz, our, our uh, Amaris is Olicia Petrova. And I'm excited about her because she's from St. Petersburg, Any Russia. Any singer coming out of Russia is, is probably going to know their business. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I, I'm going to say this. My favorite few pages of Verdi of all time are is Amneris' music from The Judgment of Rodimus. It is so overwhelmingly dramatic. <laughs> That is yeah. Verdi. That I mean, oh, there's nothing better than that. I'm a big Wagner fan, but there's nothing better than <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to hear this voice wrap itself around that. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I, it's going to be something to hear. <laughs> and we've got an old friend, as Rodimus. 
Carl Tanner. Carl Tanner. Last as uh, <laughs> Kalaf here. <laughs> Carl Tanner, who notably wrote in my score uh, as Kalaf. You guys kick ass. Nice. We, we like get, Carl yeah, Tanner. We're going to try to get Carl on the, uh, on the channel. Uh, maybe, maybe Carl will come and rebel with us. Yeah. Oh, Carl, would you consider coming and rebelling with us? He might. Maybe if we offer We'd love a, to see him. Maybe if we offer a bounty. Ooh. He, he might come hunting for that. Yes. He was at one time apparently a bounty hunter. Carl, Carl Tanner is is uh, he literally he told us the story that uh, uh, to, to the chorus that one one day he was uh, uh, he was actually driving a truck and he was singing opera in the truck and somebody pulled up and said, "Man, you ought to become an opera singer." He's like, "I didn't even really think about what I was doing." Yeah. Well, it happened. Yeah. So Carl Tanner, he's a he's a really down to earth guy, a yes. wonderful to talk to, yeah. and a terrific actor and singer. Yeah, and he can sing Mesa de Voce. Yeah, he can. Yeah. I, I really can't wait to hear his Celeste Aida. Well, yeah, <laughs> floating. I'm all wrapped up in Omneris, but that's that's gonna be talk about a special. way to talk about a way to start a show. You come out yeah. and start singing top B's. You yeah. know, it's like well, Aida's got. We're and you sing, and, right, and, right after and you yeah. sing them mezzo di voce. Yeah, that's true. For a tenor, yeah. that's tough. Yeah, it's it's when it's sung well, it sounds like oh, it's quite a reasonable aria, and when it's not, you realize how hard the damn thing is. <laughs> it is. So it's. Yeah. But I mean, Carl was a magnificent call off and yeah. uh, did a great job. And then, of course, the San Diego Opera Chorus will be playing a prominent role in which we will be taking part. Yes. That's right. There's going to be a Come and Sing, The Dream of Gerontius, conducted by a one of the founders of the King's Singers in uh, Worcester in England on October the 19th. And I, suddenly a little light bulb went up because I really want to do The Dream of Gerontius. It's never been done in San Diego that I know of. Mm -hmm. And this is Newman's canonization year uh, and who wrote the poem ah. that Elgar set. And I, but I've never actually been in it. I want to be in it. To, mm -hmm. in order to better understand it. And so for a fleeting moment, I thought, I wonder if I could go over for four or five days. I'll just drop in, do this thing, come back. You I know, can get some material for Classical yeah, Rebellion. Yeah, you could. But that's the first performance of Aida. Yeah. So Sorry. that's not going to happen on yeah. this occasion. And I... I want to go to Dallas. I know you do. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. So we did a Dallas... You're flirting uh, with yeah. danger. We did a but... Dallas version of the, the re Rebellion here uh, in which I admitted... We got Aida on Friday the 25th and Sunday the 27th of October. <clears throat> and that weekend, 25, 26, 27, Dallas is doing Vaughn Williams' as a Sea Symphony, which I've wanted to hear since my, for 25, th almost 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. 28 years. I've wanted to Not hear. the most common piece that not turns the up most on common, orchestral No, because it's not easy to pull, pull off. And it takes a lot of people. Yeah. It takes a lot of people. And so I was like, man, I was looking at flights. <laughs> And there's a flight back, so I could leave Saturday morning, get in early because you know you save a few hours going east, and then um, no other way. I could leave Sunday morning right. from Dallas and pick up a couple here, hours. Pick up a couple hours, get back here at ten with a two o'clock performance of Aida. What do you think, folks? But Should he do it? Send us your suggestions. The specter of a delayed flight. And it's flirting with danger, <sighs> but you're a thrill seeker. You are, a, I, you are a classical I'm a musical three, thrill seeker. You're a musical yeah. thrill seeker. I think you should do it. Do it. You know you want to. I know I want to. <laughs> I really do. So we all have to make sacrifices uh, in music, but sometimes we can get away with it. Yeah, Go for it, man. I can't. Anyway. I can't. I, can't, you, I cannot you stand have... the look I would get from our chorus master. He would be so disappointed. <laughs> and I would be disappointed. Well, you can't miss a performance. Because you went and moonlighted in Dallas with the Von Williams Sea Symphony? I mean, I'm not exactly feeling cheated at not being able to fly all the way to England and sing The Dream of Gerontius and come back, uh, given the fact that I have four performances of Aida that's to true. contribute to, because yeah. that's fairly rewarding in it itself. It's my fourth Aida, and I'm looking forward to it. This will actually be my second. Okay. I was in it back in the 1980s. Ah. So... Anyway, if you haven't seen Aida, uh, you really shouldn't miss this. No. I mean, it, you got to be there. You really do have to be yeah. there. Hopefully the mayor of San Diego, hashtag San, San Diego, Diego mayor, will actually come out and, uh, and be a part of the, the season opera. opening performances at San Diego because Opera. Because it is our opinion that our civic leaders should also be our cultural leaders.
And one easy way to do that is to show up to these performances or should hashtag it, yourself being there. Yeah, hashtag classical rebellion. Take a picture of yourself, Mr. Mayor, at the opera, you know, with the curtain in the background and yeah. hashtag us. Well, if the city will be thrilled. At least the musical element in the city, which vote. Let, let's put it this way. They we vote. need your help. Yeah. The arts needs your help. Yeah. The arts in San Diego needs your help. So yeah. please come out to the opera. Lead, show follow, or get the hell out of the way, Mr. Mayor. That's what they say in Dallas. Oh, that's right. I'm so <laughs> stuck on it. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> the stars at night. Oh, they're big and bright. Deep. In deep the heart in the of heart Egypt. Of, deep in the, the classical, classical rebellion. rebellion. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>